Today, I'm going to share with you the absolute fastest way to lose your belly. Now, you can have the best willpower, the best discipline, really want it really bad and never really see any results because you're missing the technique. You're missing the strategy. I'm the perfect example. I took guitar lessons for six years, right? As a teenager. And I never really progressed or never really went anywhere because I, the techniques that were taught to me were just not that great. The same thing happened with tennis in college. I was never taught the right technique. And so I would use force and I would keep practicing, but practice incorrectly. Never went anywhere. And this really applies with weight loss too, because if you have the right way of doing something, you don't have to put so much effort into it. So what I'm going to show you is the fastest way to achieve your goal. Number one, when you do the ketogenic diet, it's not differentiated what type of fats you should be eating. In other words, keto is really about low carb. You assume it's high fat, but there's certain ketogenic diets that are actually low fat, like ideal protein, for example, and others are very high in fat. But in this first tip, we're going to talk about the type of fats. This is so, so important because I did a deep dive into chronic disease and chronic obesity. And as you know, obesity keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. There's really only one thing that I know that perfectly parallels this rise in obesity. It's actually seed oils, omega-6 fatty acids. I'm talking about the rise of corn oil, the soy oil, the cottonseed, the canola, the safflower oil, the sunflower oils, all the omega-6 highly processed, ultra processed, highly inflammatory oils. And by the way, as a side note, it's very, very unnatural to consume this concentrated, refined oil from seeds. And it's hidden in your dressing that you use on your salad. You're going to get it in fast food restaurants. In fact, you're probably going to get it with any restaurant that you go to. Also, it's in animal feeds. And if they feed the chicken this grain, omega-6 fatty acids, you're going to get a profile that's pretty high in omega-6. This also includes eggs. Okay, eggs might be high in the omega-6. This also includes pork. This also includes grain-fed beef. Now, why is this so important? Because I have data, which I'm going to do a separate video on this, that shows that consuming these oils will produce more weight gain than sugar. If we look at this massive trend of obesity, the only thing that parallels it is seed oils. So it would just make sense to avoid those if you want to lose weight. And so this also relates to the type of protein that you should be eating. Grass-fed, grass-finished beef and wild-caught fish. That's tip number one, very important. All right, so number two, consume a very large salad, one a day, unless you have gut inflammation, in which case you would either do fermented vegetables in the form of sauerkraut or kimchi or eliminate the vegetables altogether. Now, why would I even recommend a salad? I mean, what's that going to do? Yes, it does have some nutrients, potassium, magnesium, folate, vitamin C, a lot of different phytonutrients. But if you get salad that's grown on living soil, you're going to get a really good probiotic. That's right. There's microbes in this raw salad that can help fortify your gut. Plus the fiber can actually feed your microbiome. So one huge benefit of consuming salads is to help your microbiome as far as the diversity and the quantity of microbes in your gut, which directly help you lose weight. The microbiome in an obese person versus someone who's thin is completely different. And of course, what you're going to put on the salad is not going to be seed oils. You're going to put extra virgin olive oil, and you can also use uh, balsamic vinaigrette and other things as well. And the cool thing about salads is that you don't have to count the carbs because they're so tiny. All right, number three, we want to produce some really deep ketosis. So when you test yourself for ketones on a blood test, there's a certain reading that can tell you how deep or how much ketosis you're in. Just by getting on a ketogenic diet is not going to do it alone. There's two other things you have to do. One is called intermittent fasting. Okay. Now I have a lot of videos on this, but very simply, I'm going to recommend you do one meal per day. And this will give you 23 hours of fasting. So not only is this going to be very powerful into causing your body to adapt to running on fat all day long, but you'll have so many other benefits. 
cognitive improvements, uh, mood changes, um, reduction of inflammation. And by the way, when you get off the seed oils, you're reducing inflammation way, way down. You have to realize that inflammation from seed oils triggers insulin resistance. It destroys your metabolism. It makes things slower. So doing the intermittent fasting, okay, you're actually correcting insulin resistance with the help of the lowering of carbs, with the change in the type of fat that you're consuming. So all of these things compounded together are going to get you to your goal extremely fast. And we need exercise. Now, the type of exercise I'm going to recommend is to do a combination of walking and high-intensity interval training. I'm going to recommend you do walking every single day uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, it's going to help with weight loss. But number two, it's going to actually help with stress reduction. And it's going to help you sleep. And sleep is going to be very important to not just reduce cortisol, but to help enhance growth hormone, which is highest when you're sleeping. That's the main fat-burning hormone. And people that don't sleep, I mean, that's like a big barrier to losing weight. You're not going to lose weight if you can't sleep and you can't recover. I had a patient who came in that was trying to lose weight, right? They did exercise. I'm talking like, I think it was two hours of exercise. It might have been three times a week for an entire year. And she lost like one or two pounds the entire year. It was because she wasn't sleeping because all I did is correct her sleep. And bam, she lost weight. Another person came in, uh, they were exercising six hours a day. I'm not kidding obsessed with exercising, wasn't sleeping, didn't lose any weight. We helped her sleep. She started losing weight. So we want the walking to help with the stress reduction to help you sleep. But we also want the high intensity exercise because the intensity is what really activates certain hormones that are related to fat burning. And so the more intense, the better. Of course, work up to it. Make sure you don't hurt yourself. But I just wanted to give you the technique and the concept. It must be intense. Um, you want to use as many muscles as you can, but we want to do short, high intense workouts that involve multiple muscles and make sure you don't overdo it. In other words, the frequency of this high intensity interval training should be between one to three times a week, depending on how old you are and how good your recovery is. I've worked with people in the past that I've just reduced the frequency of exercising per week. And that was a thing that helped them working out less. Go figure. They were overtraining. The keto diet that you want to do is a moderate amount of protein, but the key is the quality of proteins. And also you can mix in there some organ meats too for the nutrition, the nutrient dense aspect of this. We want to make sure that you also do electrolytes, B vitamins, maybe from nutritional yeast, and don't forget sea salt because a lot of people don't have enough sea salt and they end up feeling tired and they haven't made the connection that that is what's causing the fatigue. You need enough sea salt, especially on this program, because you're going to be losing a lot of water weight and we want to be able to hold the water with more salt. And the other point about that is if you're having problems sleeping because your adrenals are kind of overactive, what that means is you need more salt. More salt can help you sleep at night. But the way that you'll know that you're adapting is your hunger goes away. If you're doing this right, you're burning your fat and you're rarely hungry. So this means that you may even go longer than one meal a day with your fasting if you have a lot of weight to lose. And also I mentioned this keto adaptation, but you also have fat adaptation. This is a little, a little bit different. This is a point where your metabolism is becoming very, very uh, flexible in that you can adapt to burning fat very quickly because your mitochondria is becoming healthier. And that usually takes a minimum of three months. But for a lot of people that have had insulin resistance for many years, it could take a lot longer. The goal is to get you to the point where you're so healthy and you have so much flexibility within your metabolism that you could afford to go off the program. You could afford to eat more carbs and they're not going to affect you. But remember, a principle I've talked about before, if you haven't seen my videos, this might be a new concept, but it's not about losing weight to get healthy. It's about getting healthy to lose weight. So now that you have this plan of action, you have better technique, but I think we need to fill in the blank with some details. And for that information, you must watch this video right here.